Suddenly, what had been a single line of descent has been replaced by a series of lines that connect to form a giant family tree. In the years between 1925 and 1965, over a hundred hominid fossils are found and categorized in South Africa alone. And they can all be placed in relation to each other by accurate dating. Some species are evolutionary dead ends, while others appear to be part of a line that leads to humans. But a number of human-like competitors occupy the Earth at the same time, with several routes to humanity. The only way to cut through the confusion is to go further back in time, to the root of the human family tree. Before we have a big brain, long before we use fire and language, before we even make tools, the creature everyone is looking for now marks the very beginning of humanity. November 30th, 1974. An American-led team is searching for the oldest human ancestor on Earth. And the search has a new focus. The northern end of the Rift Valley in Ethiopia. It's now possible to date rocks very accurately. So it's possible to be more precise than ever before about where to dig. Using new radiometric technology, they've dated the volcanic layers here to around three and a half million years old. Team leader is Donald Johansson, a rising star in the world of anthropology. He knows Dart's Australopithecus africanus lived over two million years ago. and Leakey's Homo habilis at about one and three quarter million, but they were on separate ancestral lines. He believes there is a common ancestor over three million years old, the same age as the surrounding rocks. Johansson's been kept away from any digging by essential paperwork. And now he started it's a chore he's determined to finish. But his colleague, Tom Gray, returns from the site with other ideas. How's it going? Uh, actually very boring. There are areas they haven't surveyed for a while away from the main dig. You need a break? I was thinking of taking a hike out to bed three. Yeah? You want to come? Uh, I don't know. I got to finish this. I mean, this is pretty urgent. I gotta do something. The urge to do what he came here for finally gets the better of Johansson. Let's go. He makes a decision that will change his life. They head away from the site to explore a couple of isolated gullies. They have no idea they're just a few hundred yards from the greatest fossil find in history. But as the afternoon wears on, they have little to show for their efforts. They survey for a couple of hours. By mid-afternoon, the temperature is over 100 degrees. And all they have found are a few teeth from an extinct horse and part of the skull of a pig. Okay. They decide to head back to camp. But Johansson has a hunch to look again in an old gully on their way home. Hey, Tom, this way. It's been thoroughly checked before and produce nothing. Hey man, what's up? But today, something catches Johansson's eye. 
Come here, Tom. A shape in the dirt that just seems too regular to be a stone. You see that? It's a fossilized arm bone. That's an arm. It's a hominid. And there's more. That's how many Parts of a small skull. Jaw. Elvis. Arm. Oh my god, this is. In all, nearly 50 pieces of fossilized skeleton. Well, watch your, watch your feet. What do we have here? What's huh? <laughs> going on? Uh -oh. I don't know where to stand, man. I know, don't. <laughs> this is it! This is what we've been looking for! I can't believe it! One unbelievable thought goes through his mind. What if all the pieces fit together? Could they be parts of a single, extremely primitive skeleton? Hey guys! Come on! Woo! Come on! Yes! If Don Johansson is right, he is looking at the most complete skeletal remains of the earliest human ancestor yet discovered. What makes this individual an absolutely spectacular find is that she's so complete. For the first time, we had more than the odd broken bone for one specimen. We had virtually an entire skeleton. What's missing on one side is present on the other side. I mean, it's so rare because these hominids didn't bury their dead. And in normal circumstances, if an individual died, the scavengers would come in, the bones would be dispersed. Uh, the mere probability that something is fossilized is extremely small. But to actually go in and find uh, such a beautiful fossil of a complete human ancestor is really a once-in-a-lifetime occurrence. In the first few hours following the discovery, the scale of the find is hard for the team to grasp. But that night, in the wind-blown desert outside of Hadar, Ethiopia, the realization of what they have achieved begins to sink in. Inspired by a tape of the Beatles' song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, the new fossil picks up a name, Lucy. The Lucy! All right. The Lucy. The Lucy. Ethiopia, 3.2 million years ago. This is Australopithecus afarensis, Lucy. She put together the pieces of what one of our ancestors at this point in time really looked like. And it was a huge shock because what uh, she looked like was basically a chimpanzee. Lucy is a tree dweller in a changing land. For 50 million years, her ancestors have inhabited the trees of Africa. But the land once covered with unbroken forest is now giving way to grass and scattered woodland. Her diet is mostly the fruit of trees like this fig. But one tree will not support her for long. And unlike her ancestors, she can no longer swing to the next tree. She must find another root. But Lucy does something no ape ever did. She stands up and walks on two legs. 